Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 672. Dispelling the myths about hair thinning as we age. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we're going to talk about thinning hair as we get older. In my anti-aging longevity practice, BioBalance Health, one of, the, one of the complaints that my new patients have as they come to see me is, my hair's thin, it's breaking, it doesn't look like it used to, it's not shiny, I can't get it to grow more. And that's almost universal for women. Men don't complain about it so much because they kind of expect to lose hair if their father or grandfather did. But it's still a factor for men. Hair gets thinner as we get older. However, um, and it also gets grayer and coarser. So um, I can't explain some of the details to you why this happens, but your growth hormone and your testosterone and estrogen have a lot to do with it. As growth hormone goes down after we are 40 years old, believe it or not, we don't grow hair, nails, skin turnover decreases if we don't take any replacement hormones. It gets worse and worse as we get older. You all probably have a relative, aunt, uncle, grandparent who has like a female who looks like she's almost bald. That's the natural process of what they call um, a- aging uh, is a beautiful thing. Well, it's not really beautiful, but it is less work than trying to stay young and, and beautiful. So uh, I advise you to stay young and beautiful. What I can tell you about hair thinning has a lot to do with the research that's been done. It has medical, I have medical input in this um, health cast, but also I have input from my uh, health spa biobalanced skin. So once you accept that your hair is going to be thinner as you, as you pass age 40, no matter what you do, uh, but there are some things that everyone should know about looking the best, taking the best path forward with their hair. So um, if you started your life with Thin, fine hair. My, my, I always had really thick hair. My hair's thinner now, but, um, but it's better than it used to be. Anyway, my mother has had blonde, beautiful blonde hair, fine, fine hair um, strands. It was always golden and looked beautiful. But as she aged, it because it was fine, it got so thin you could see through it. And she did not do the things that I suggest for you because I was her kid and who listens to their kid, right? But having said that, she could have. She could have kept most of her hair and had beautiful gray, but she colored it golden hair as she got older. Um, If you are concerned about your hair, you should at least consider getting your hormones replaced after you go through menopause or even before. Testosterone goes away before menopause, estrogen after or at menopause. Estrogen helps grow hair and it helps your growth hormone increase. So does testosterone. Uh, What this does is it makes your hair follicles stay alive instead of dying at a a, uh, routine rate. It also makes your scalp oilier, which keeps the quality of your hair better. Um, And you also have longer longevity of each hair strand, or so each hair. So at menopause, if you lack those two hormones, it's going to be a downward uh, road for your hair. It's not going to get thicker. It will get thinner unless you replace these two hormones and stimulate your growth hormone by replacing them. So sometimes 
I'm talking about loss of hair all over. Sometimes we have loss of hair in certain areas. So if you look at your grandparents and see how they aged or how they, where they lost hair, some people lose hair here, some here, especially men, but some women lose hair here and here. Some women um, lose hair all over. Um, but in general, it depends on your genetic makeup, what you were given to be, so you're given your gen genes, and then after that, you have to deal with your own genes. You're not going to be like your friend who had like a horse tail of hair when she was a kid, if you had thin hair. You're not going to get a horse tail of hair by doing these things. You're just going to get your own hair back. So some of the other, the reasons people bald besides genetics is scarring alopecia, and that's an autoimmune disease that causes you to have plugs of hair that die, and you have round areas of no hair, and it's all over all over your head usually. Androgenic alopecia can be from your own uh, DHT, a byproduct of testosterone, that causes your hair follicles to die in these areas and this area, and you see that in men a lot, although it can be genetic as well. Um, if you've used hair extensions, uh, you may have damaged the roots with the tension that it pu pulls on it, and you may have scarring that when you don't use your hair extensions, you're not going to get back. Once your scalp is scarred and, and the hair follicles are no longer there, you can't bring them back. So extensions can be dangerous. Dreadlocks and um, different types of uh, treatments that women of color use, or men of color, they're da they can be damaging their scalp by doing that. And that is because there's tension on, on the hair follicle, and oftentimes that causes scarring or hair loss. So the things we do to our hair can cause problems. Over bleaching your hair, that literally takes, takes off the outside of your, of your um, hair strand, and it thins the hair, so if you bleach your hair, you're going to have thinner hair, because that's what bleach does. If you color your hair, it puts an extra layer over your hair, and it makes it softer, and it makes it look thicker, and it keeps the frizz down, and it is actually a benefit to color your hair. Nowadays, every all the hair color that we use is vegetable, and it is very safe. So coloring your hair is not, that's a myth, that it's going to cause you to have hair loss. It doesn't. It causes your hair to be covered and protected. Um, we have a new way that I never, you know, guys go to Hans, Hans Wyman or the, to, to dermatologists and have hair plugs done. Just think of Biden and his son. You can tell he's had plugs. Um, so... You can get some hair back there. They use the follicles from back here where your hair is thick and put them into the places that are thin. Um, this is costly, and you have to go back over and over again to get them replaced, and that they are also not going to be immune from any of your genetics or medications or um, coloring your hair or anything else. That is, that or bleaching your hair, excuse me. So... Um, those, to me, aren't the best answers to male hair loss or female hair, hair loss. There's a new thing called TED, T-E-D, ha um, hair uh, restoration. It's painless. It's an ultrasound. It feels like a head massage for half an hour. And it literally makes uh, spaces at the level of the hair follicle with the first massage. And the second massage drives in a specific kind of a serum that feeds the follicles, stimulates the follicles to actually come back to life. And if you have hair loss all over your head or even just in some spots, TED will bring your hair follicles back to life and you will get thicker hair. And they say that with each TED, this is Alma, La uh, Alma Laser is the one that does this. And that's their machine. They've worked on the serum for 17 years. It works. So you can, ha you can get your hair thicker with this process, and you don't have any pain, and it's, not, it's, it's a fraction of the cost of uh, hair transplants. So there is hope for that. Uh, but when we talk about hair loss, we also talk about loss of our usual 
uh, texture and dryness of our hair. So at menopause, when estrogen and testosterone go away, our hair texture changes and we get a lot drier. We don't have the oil that used to make our hair follicles happy. The shaft of the hair becomes fragile and uh, it stops protecting the hair shaft and so it breaks. So your hair breaks off at a, sh at a shorter level and you get kind of dull, um, kind of dull. You don't have the shiny hair that you had when you were young because you don't have any oil. So some things that you can do that actually work are you can take biotin every day. You can give your body the building blocks of hair, which is collagen, and take collagen powder in your coffee or in your tea or in some other drink during the day so that you give your body the building blocks. So if you are stimulating your hair to grow with hormones or, or with TED, you have the building blocks to grow more hair. So collagen is essential. You can also take B vitamins, uh, biotin's a B vitamin, but also the other B vitamins like B12 and B6 are very important to hair growth. Um, and they are found mostly in um, the grains, but mostly in red meat. Um, and there are several other supplements that can help. Like if you are iron deficient for some reason, and you don't have enough iron, your hair will get thinner. You'll lose hair. You need iron to grow hair. Um, you also need fat-soluble vitamins like A, E, uh, and D to grow hair. A, E, K, and D to grow hair. So write that down. Um, and that's, that's very important just to give you the things you need to grow hair, not to stimulate the hair growth. That's hormonal, and that can be done uh, with TED. But, you, but if you don't have the building blocks, you're not going to grow hair. Just think about that. You have to have everything that your hair requires. So what are the remedies for hair loss besides vitamins and nutrition? The remedies for hair loss include um, hormone replacement, estradiol, and testosterone, which will then increase your growth hormone. Uh, conditioners, which conditioning your hair smooths it, protects it uh, after you use uh, a shampoo. You should use a shampoo that doesn't have any sulfides in it, sulfides in it, because sulfides break the hair shaft. Sulfides are, are damaging the hair. It's usually, those are usually hair... Shampoos are usually used by young people who have oily skin, oily scalps, and they want to get rid of some of the oil and they want to, and in getting rid of some of the oil, they're also getting rid of some of the, um, some of the strength of their hair, but it doesn't seem to bother them that much. But people who are aging shouldn't have any sulfites in their hair, uh, hair products. Uh, you can use hair color to cover the shaft of your hair, and I use hair color. I've used it since I was, get this, 28. I was gray at 28. Way early, but it runs in my family, and so that's, I've been coloring my hair ever since. Um, you can get a Brazilian treatment to keep your hair from being kinky, broken, uh, or bird's nest-like hair. It changes the actual shape of the shaft of your hair, and it has some drawbacks that we won't discuss, but... It, seal, it seals in a, a product that then keeps your hair shaft rounder and not as flat. Flat makes you curly. So it straightens your hair. So that does help. It does not hurt your hair. Um, taking supplements with collagen helps. Taking methyl B12 and biotin every day. Don't bleach your hair. Um, eat a diet with healthy fats and protein because hair is protein. If you don't eat healthy fats and protein, you're not going to get great hair. You have to do all of these things. Don't wash your hair every day. Wash every two to three days. Um, take your fat-soluble vitamins, A, E, K, and D. If you're anemic, take iron. And avoid statins because statins cause you to lose hair. So that's one of the things that um, if you can not take a statin, if you don't have heart disease, you've never had a heart attack, and you're on a statin, Maybe you don't need to be on one. So you get a cardiac calcium scan. If you don't have any plaque, you don't need to be on a statin, and then your hair will seem much better. But there's other drugs that can affect your hair growth, and I had to take um, a beta blocker. Beta blockers are used, for, are used to decrease your heart rate. They're also used, like it's like metoprolol. That's a beta blocker. I had to take that because I had atrial fib, and my atrial fib was fixed a couple of years ago, and now I don't have to take that. So 
it's amazing how different my hair is. So I guess you can go back and look at my hair in two years ago or three years ago. Anyway, beta blockers and all blood pressure medications tend to make your hair thinner. And I mean, it was a lot thinner when I was on a beta blocker. Um, if you're on prednisone or steroids, that causes your hair to fall out. Uh, it also causes your hair to get thinner. Cancer treatments, you know, you all know that cancer treatments can make all your hair fall out. Um, but in general, cancer treatments have to be done, so you have to deal with it afterwards when your hair is growing back. So if you can be as healthy as you can as your hair is growing back, you will get much more bang for your buck if you stay healthy, eat right, take your vitamins as your hair is growing back in. Um, anything that inhibits your B vitamins like some autoimmune diseases, alcohol consumption, and vegetarianism um, is going to affect your hair. You need to have your B vitamins, and most of those are found in meat or animal products. So I would, you can take additional B vitamins if you're a vegetarian, but getting enough protein to grow hair is rather difficult. So... So what can you do? So let, let me summarize this. You can get the best nutrition possible with the most protein and the best vitamins. You can take your vitamins and supplements so that you know that you get your enough nutrition to grow hair and collagen that you add to your diet every day. All of these things are really important to growing hair and can be the one thing that keeps you from getting good hair. Hair care. Get hair pr care products without sulfide. Don't wash your hair every day. Um, wash your, try to massage your scalp when you're washing your hair. And decrease the use of the hot hair tools because that breaks your hair as well, especially if they're too hot. Color your hair or do a Brazilian. Um, both of those make your hair stronger and keep, them, keep your hair, hair shafts from breaking. Medications. Obviously, you can't stop medications that you absolutely need, and I had to suffer through years of taking metoprolol, and I tried to get to the lowest dose I could possibly tolerate uh, before I was treated, or just get treated for whatever the issue is. Um, but metoprolol is also used for high blood pressure, so you can always ask for a different high blood pressure medicine that's not as bad for your hair loss. Um, Get your hormones replaced if, you don't, if you're lacking them. Uh, make sure your dihydrotestosterone, DHT, is not too high. If, it, if your DHT is high, just genetically you'll make more DHT out of testosterone, then you need to take saw palmetto to decrease your DHT. You need some, you don't need too much. So have it checked at the doctor's office, get a free DHT, that's what it's called, free DHT test, and make sure it's normal uh, before you start suppressing your DHT because you do need some DHT. But saw palmetto is the best way to do that. Some people, especially guys, need finasteride. But I'll tell you, if you take finasteride for your hair, you're going to decrease your ability to have erections. You're going to decrease the effects of testosterone, even if you have testosterone. So make sure that you actually positively have to take finasteride before you uh, embark on that uh, medical treatment. I never really realized this, but sun damage is huge. We go out, we r drive in a convertible, we go out in a garden, we don't put a hat on, we don't cover our hair, we go swimming, we don't do anything to our hair but get chlorine in it, which dries it out. Uh, you need to either wear a hat or do what I do when I go to the pool. I take my conditioner and my hair rebuilder, and I wet my hands, I wet my hair, and I put it through run it through my hair so my hair is protected from the sun and I don't always have to wear a hat. But if I play golf, I'm going to wear a hat and I'm going to protect my hair because I'm not going to put that stuff in my hair before I play golf because I'm, I'm going to have greasy hands. So make sure your hair is covered. I've, ma I've made my husband start wearing a hat. His head's so big he can't find a hat to, mat to fit him, but we finally found one. Nike makes big hats. I didn't know that. So I found that in, in my quest for a hat for my husband. So cover your hair for sun, from sun damage. That will benefit your hair growth and your hair quality. So the summary is 
You have to look at every area of your life to find out why your hair is thinning. We know age makes your hair thin. So you're gonna have to accept the baseline of, yeah, your hair is going to thin as you get older. It won't be as thick as it was when you were 20 or 30. Those were the best years of our lives and we were all busy taking care of kids and going to school and doing all kinds of other things with our jobs. So if you miss that part, <laughs> it's not gonna go back to that. You're just, you're just gonna have to start with knowing you'll have some thinning or, or inability to grow as long hair as you used to be able to grow and do all these things to make your hair healthy. If you run into a problem, then you can go to Hans Wyman and, and have, uh, they, they do all kinds of hair uh, restoration, but, or you can come to us and get a TED, TED treatments, four TED treatments, uh, one a month that will make your hair grow back in areas that it has, it has stopped growing in. And this really works best for men who are under 60, but it does work for men who are over 60. So you can give that a try. But always give your body enough of the building blocks and the vitamins and the, and the nutrients that you need to grow hair. Because other you, you can actually sandbag your treatment and not be able to uh, grow hair because you're not doing all the things you need to do or you're taking a medication that's preventing it from working. We all want to have beautiful hair, and, and some men don't care about their hair, and they look lovely and handsome without it. Uh, but for those of us who love to have beautiful hair, we need to take care of it, and we need to keep our hormones going so that we can still grow hair. Thank you for listening. I, I realize this is very much aesthetic and not medical, but it touches on all the medical treatments uh, that we um, have to go through as we get older. So. Please be aware of anything that uh, pertains to you and see if you can reverse the process. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.